Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be unboxing the Dell S3422 DWG. And if at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's get this thing unboxed. All right, now this is a pretty beat up box. So we're gonna actually not only be testing out the monitor today, but we're also gonna be testing out how good Dell's packaging is. Cause you can see, I mean, look at the rips here. Look at down here. This thing is super beat up. This will kind of be a testament for how good their packaging is. Although I have good faith because Dell's packaging has just been spot on before. All right, and then opening it up, the inside looks fine. And in here we have the stand, which is a pretty basic Dell stand, but it is really nice. The bottom is all metal and you got a nice high quality thumb screw. Overall, an attractive, stable stand. And then we have the typical height adjustable and tilt, but I don't think you get swivel and I don't think you get rotation. Actually, you can see right there, that's not lining up you do get, it looks like you get a tiny bit of rotation just to not actually rotate it fully, but just help with making it level with your desk if it's uneven. In typical Dell Alienware fashion, they give you a ton of cables. You get an HDMI cable, you get a USB type A to USB type B, and then you get a display port cable. And then in here you have the power cable, which is nice and long, which is really nice. This one's a nice and long one, quite good. All right, now to put this stand together before we get to the monitor, all you gotta do is that and that line up fit that in there together, and then you just twist it just with your hand. You don't need anything else for this. This is a nice high quality thumb screw. Now that that's tight, your whole stand is put together, and this is lock on, so it's quite easy to do. All we're gonna do is take off the top here. They put a little slit in it right there, so all you're gonna do is just pull this back, take your stand that's already been put together, and you're gonna just put it in the top right here. Once that's locked in, just press down, and there it's locked in. And that is how you make it super easy to unbox. Let's put this on the desk. All right, now let's take the plastic off. And there we go. Even in a totally mangled and destroyed box, the monitor is perfectly fine. All right, so right away, it's a pretty attractive monitor. Pretty typical for Dell. You got that nice stable stand down here. We do have quite a bit of height adjustability. You have quite a bit of tilt. It all feels very good. And then you have just a little bit of rotation there, which they do with a lot of ultra wides just to make sure that it's even and straight on your desk. Flipping this around, we have the typical Dell menu system with this fantastic joystick right here and then the four buttons that I never use. And right in the front over here is actually the power button. It's dedicated and I really like that. Back here on the stand, we do have a little cable management thing right here. I do wish it was a little bit higher because as you can see with max height, you'll be able to see that from the front. But if it's about right there, you won't be able to see it. So I wish this was a little bit higher, like right here. All right, now for the ports, it looks like we have two HDMIs. We then have a display port right here, a three and a half millimeter audio out, a USB type B upstream, and then it looks like two USB type A downstreams. That is actually really cool. And I'm glad that they did that. Gives you two USBs with that, makes this thing just a little bit more premium. All right, but now that it's on the desk, let's get this thing hooked up and see how it games. And then we're gonna do a ghosting test. All right guys, now that it's all plugged in, let's get this thing turned on and check out the menu system. Now, right away, there is a nice little blue light that you can turn on and off that's actually under here. Uh, that will either come on or off if it's in standby mode and stuff like that. That's kind of nice. Now going over here using the joystick to go through the menu system. We have right away different presets right here for the colors. So we have standard FPS, MOBA slash RTS, RPG, sports, game one, game two, game three, comfort view, warm, cool, and then a custom color. Very good. Let's go into standard. And then you can see once you go out of here, there's a couple things that you can customize like game enhance mode which you can turn on in timer, your frame rate that can display it on the screen, or you can do some display alignment stuff. That's pretty cool. AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, which is on. You can turn that off if you want to. And then you have your different response time settings, which is either fast, super fast, extreme, and then MPRT, which is basically the motion blur reduction mode. Uh, that is not a response time mode, but that will turn off AMD FreeSync. Uh, we will test all of these at the end of the video, so stick around for that if you want to check out the ghosting. Okay, then going in here with brightness and contrast, the brightness is only at 75%, so let's turn this all the way up, and that actually gets quite bright. Uh, probably looks around 350 or 400 nits, which is quite good. Even with a lot of lights in the room, we are not seeing a whole lot of reflections because of that matte display, as well as it just being pretty bright. Continuing through the menu, you got the input source, but that's all auto on. You can turn auto select on off if you would like to. Obviously this is a 21 by nine because it's an ultra wide panel. You also have some HDR mode. So if you wanna do display HDR 400, whatever you can do that in there and then enable it via windows. There is also picture in picture and picture by picture 
right here, which is nice in case you want to use this for multitasking as well as gaming. You have volume, menu, some personalized stuff. Those are for those four buttons that I don't really use. And then we got some other stuff right there. All right, but that's enough talk. Let's get in game and see how this thing games. All right, guys, getting right into the game. I did forget to mention that this hits a max refresh rate of 144 hertz, uh, which is pretty good. Although the new industry standard is pretty much 165 hertz but I wouldn't say that's a deal breaker at all. Now this is also a VA panel. So you can see right here, the blacks are super deep and black. Now, one thing I'm very interested to see is the ghosting because Dell recently has been an incredibly, they've been doing an incredibly good job with their ghosting, keeping it very, very minimal. But yeah, with this being 144 Hertz, obviously it's very smooth. Uh, I am quite interested in that ghosting. Now also just from seeing the corners being black, we're not really seeing any backlight bleed, but that test will be in the full review. So subscribe below if you aren't already, if you wanna check out the full review, which will be coming in a couple days. But so far, I mean, beautiful. It's nice and bright. It's very vibrant as you can see right there. Uh, it's smooth with 144 Hertz. Dell has typically been doing pretty low input lags for their most of their monitors and um, that will be in the full review. But so far, I mean, this thing looks really fast. I just came from a monitor that had some pretty bad ghosting. Uh, so this one, I can already tell it's much better. But again, we're gonna find that out at the end with the full ghosting test, which should be very interesting. I'm actually quite interested. As well, looking for screen tearing, not really seeing any, which is also really good. I've found that a lot of times Dell lags behind just a little bit with some of the specs, which gets people to not buy them as much as a company like LG, but they've been doing really good stuff with their VA panels with ghosting. I mean, these things look like really high end IPS panels. It's pretty amazing. As well, the vibrancy, the blacks are very deep. They're very nice. So going in more of a dark spot of the map, we're not really seeing any red and green ghosting. You'd probably be able to see it right there uh, where it would really just fade and you would be able to see the each different red and greens but we're not really seeing that, uh, which is a good thing. That means that if this does have ghosting, it's either gonna be normal ghosting or it's gonna be not very much ghosting. So that's a good thing already. Sometimes when they try to make VA panels really low with ghosting, you get some artifacting with the red and green colors, uh, but it looks like we're not seeing that yet. Uh, we haven't tested the ghosting out, but I've got, I've got high hopes for this. All right, now that we got a few kills, overall pretty impressed with the gameplay so far, but let's get on to testing that ghosting. All right, so now we're here testing the ghosting. Now, if you look at it right now, that is actually pretty bad ghosting. Not the worst by any means with VA panels, but it is not, definitely not the best, but let's go over. It is currently in the slowest in fast. Let's go to super fast, see how it changes it. Definitely changes it quite a bit, brings it down a lot, uh, but it's still fairly bad. Now we're gonna go into extreme. Uh, and here we see just a little bit of pixel overshooting. However, we do have very minimal amount of ghosting, a really good amount of ghosting. I would say because we only see just a little bit of pixel overshooting, that extreme is probably what you wanna set it in. Uh, because I think even though there is a little bit of pixel overshooting, you know, we're seeing right here, really, really good amount of small amount of ghosting for a VA panel. As you can see right there, really, really good. Now we do see a little bit on the tail end, but these are VA panels. Most VA panels will have a little amount of ghosting and this is actually less than most VA panels. I'm actually pretty impressed. I was pretty worried immediately because in fast mode, it's there's a lot of ghosting in fast mode. You bring it down to super fast, it gets less and then extreme is definitely what you wanna set it in. It's quite good. All right, so checking right now on Amazon, here is the monitor for 510 bucks. As of filming, it always fluctuates and changes, but that is a really good price for a 34 inch 1440p ultra wide at 144 Hertz VA panel with that amount of ghosting. That's pretty amazing. Again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. And if you wanna check out my full review, definitely subscribe below. It's probably already out, but if it isn't, it'll be out in a few days. But this was Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.